Thank you for joining us. I'm Spencer Tillis. And I'm Giselle Espinales. And this is the Delmarva Sports Insider. We are your ticket to highlights and the behind the scenes scoop of all your teams up and down Delmarva, as well as some of your favorite pro teams in DC, Baltimore, and Philly. We will have exclusive interviews with coaches, current and former players. Plus, we want to engage you, the viewer. Tell us what games and teams you want to hear about in upcoming episodes. That's right. We want to be a part of your team, and we want you to be a part of ours. Delmarva Sports Insider starts now. In this week's episode, we head up to Del Mar and check in on the Wildcats as they hosted Y High for their very first scrimmage. And I wouldn't be surprised if Ravens head coach John Harbaugh had his own fantasy football draft. Regular season is right around the corner. We'll let you know our picks. And we'll head down to Snow Hill and get our first look at this year's Eagles team as they took on North Dorchester. But we begin today with a team right here on Del Mar that has some high expectations heading into the football season. Queen Anne's now they held their first scrimmage this year on Friday against St. Mary's Reich. And now the Lions finished last year with a 8-3 record overall before eventually being bounced in the state tournament in the first round. Now they did lose a few guys from that team, but they bring back a lot of key players. And it's not just about what they're going to do here early on, but it's about putting in the work that will pay off towards the end of the year. It's, it's definitely a, prog uh, a work in progress, really. Um, most of our line is going to be really young. We're going to be a bunch of pretty much sophomores and juniors. So it's just pretty much getting their confidence up, and then everything will just kind of mess together after that. Spencer, you know, the Lions are one of the teams that every other team in the Bayside North Division actually circles on their calendar, so they mean business. But like this QB said, this is a young team, and they have to find their comfort level. In their scrimmage on Friday, the Lions had some mistakes on both sides of the ball. The program itself has not a, won a regional championship in a couple years, and for this team to get back to the top of the football chain, they need to feel comfortable, especially since they have some new faces. The Lions have the athletic ability, but we know football is not just about athletic ability. Spencer, it's all about the mental game as well. I think you're right, too. I mean, you look at they did have a couple of mistakes early on, but I actually really liked what I saw from this team. And the fact is, you're going to have that early on in your first few scrimmages. Those are why those are there, to work through that, get yourself better. And what I really was impressed with was Bradley, how calm and composed he was throughout that interview and throughout the game. And if you can get that from your senior leadership, especially when it's at quarterback, you know you're going to have a pretty good chance at winning a lot of ball games, especially in the high school game. So I think they actually have a pretty good thing here moving forward. I know. He's been there with four years with the team. All right. It was scrimmage Saturday in Delaware. Sussex Central Knights played host to the Woodbridge, Woodbridge Raiders and the Stephen Decatur Seahawks. The Knights were doing this all day, controlling the game at the line of scrimmage. That's the quarterback running down and really having their way with the other teams. And the Seahawks had questions on who would be their number one running back. But they got a few contributions from a few guys. And look at that guy just go. Committee, and now the Woodbridge showed their ability to make the big play, especially this guy. I mean, look, I think it was the quarterback scrimmages, especially for the Raiders. That was this group has actually uh, worked super hard in camp. We have we've, we've uh, tightened the bolts down a little bit in camp from last year and previous years, and uh, uh, pushed the kids pretty hard this year. I got to tell you, they responded. We have uh, good numbers out, and the kids we're working them hard, and uh, and you can see their in their play. You know, these are always good when you have those three team scrimmages or four teams, the opportunity to really gauge each other against, uh, you know, some good competition. And the thing that really stood out for me was why. I mean, we went to their first couple practices, and there was a lot of questions as to what running back was going to take over for them moving forward. And the thing is, it looks like they have multiple guys that can do it. I mean, they had a uh, couple guys out there that were really running the ball pretty hard. And the fact is, uh, I mean, Stephen Decatur, that is, they had guys that they were handing the ball off to running hard downhill. And they also had a guy that was about 250 pounds, and he was laying guys out. I mean, he was picking up yards. You want to talk about falling forward to get the first down. He was definitely getting that done out there from Giselle. And I feel like moving forward, they got a good thing going there. It's always nice when you got a couple guys you can hand the ball to. And I think in, with any team, you know, and the, whether it was the Seahawks, the Raiders, or the Knights, the best part about scrimmages is just be able to finally play against someone else. And I know this scrimmage helped each team get a good measure on how their offense and defense will really perform. And no matter who's on the field, it's all about who's going to be step up under pressure and make the big plays, whether it's a scrimmage or the first game of the season. And as Coach Knox said, the cream usually comes to the top. Yeah, has a way with sayings. I really <laughs> like talking to Coach. And Seaford, they hosted a four-team scrimmage yesterday, which included Parkside, James and Bennett and Colonel Richardson. Now a strong play for both teams this thing. And speaking of strong plays, check out this run here by TJ Hayward. I mean, just knocking guys out of his way, barreling downhill. Colonel Richardson was moving the ball as well in this thing. Their quarterback sneaks here in the middle up the crease and making a lot of guys miss. He's going to be a guy to watch this year. Parkside, on the other hand, they were getting it done through the air. Aaron, this one out way downhill. Devin Redding slings nice that beautiful catch there for completion. Seaford, they got it done on defense, and I think that's going to be one area where they improved a lot this year. Made a couple interceptions, and it was good to see out of them. 
Well, we were ready. We were hyped for it, and we all came in with the right intensity, so we knew this was the first chance we got to actually put full pads on and play against somebody else, so we were ready for it. I think it, was, it went very well for us. Um, still things to improve on, but coming out today and seeing what we had, and we did a great job out here. Everybody executed well. You know, Spencer, actually being out there on Saturday, it felt like each team was actually playing for a championship. One team that stood out from the rest of them were the Rams, and I mean, their running game was on point. Finding the holes, evading defenders, they could do no wrong in my eyes. On the other hand, one of the teams that made some mistakes on both sides of the ball were, were the Blue Jays. I spoke to Coach Darling. He said his team is too selfish right now and is trying to get them to be a more cohesive unit, and, you know, the scrimmage is actually going to help them get to that better direction. Yeah, absolutely. And it's always tough, too. That's his first year at the program. So moving forward, you kind of need to get that senior leadership and kind of right. establish yourself. So I'm sure he'll be fine down the stretch. But early on, that's always tough to go. But the thing that really impressed me was Parkside. I mean, they had some guys down the field that were definitely making some plays at the ball. That passing game looks legit. And they have a couple guys, too, that I feel like you're going to watch out for this year. And at the high school level, I was a little concerned that they wouldn't be able to have the playmakers and the time to get it out there. But they found them in space. And if they can do that throughout the year, I mean, this is going to team you're definitely going to watch moving forward to sell as they are so. a quality, quality program. Well, how do you feel about it? We want to know. So reach out to us on Facebook or Twitter. Send us a message there or email us at 47abc.com. Or you can uh, email us at um, sports at WNDT.com. That is, let us know what games you want us to go to. And also check out our polls online. And don't you just love football? So much of it, and we are not done yet. Right after the break, the Del Mar Wildcats taking on the Tribe Why High. Keep it locked right here. How you doing? I'm Matt Griffith from Easton High School, head varsity football coach. You're watching the Del Marva Sports Insider. Welcome back. Well, we are still talking some football. Let yes. me tell you, we got a <laughs> special, special segment for this one. We are our own Trey Miles, who's a Y High alum, had a chance to talk to his old coach about the program's direction. Trey, were you tempted to put on some gear, and do you miss it? Well, I don't exactly miss the two-a-day practices or the undescribable scent of that locker room, but of course I do miss the game. So I stopped by practice and chatted with my former JV coach, now varsity head coach Pat McGlinchey to see exactly what Wahai will need to improve upon to return to the Bayside dominance. I got my jersey on right now. It's been seven years. Can you believe that, Coach McGlinchey? Yeah, I can't believe it. It feels like yesterday. Three and seven was a kind of down year last year, according uh, to program standards. Uh, what 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 will change that this year? Uh, the biggest difference between last year and this year is going to be team unity. Uh, we stressed it in the weight room all see all all off season. Uh, as soon as the season was over, I realized a lot of the mistakes that I made as a head football coach, um, you know, I'm going to put a lot of the blame on myself. It, it, it's, it is on my shoulders. And uh, I felt like our team wasn't together. They were more about playing for themselves. We had great athletes last year, uh, and we just didn't come together and, and play together. My man Nelson Brown will be featured in this offense. Talk about him and why he excels at what he does. Uh, Nelson Brown is just one of those phenomenal athletes. Uh, He's not an athlete you, that comes around all the time. You know, Nelson's being looked at by Division I AA football schools. Um, he's a scholarship kid, and we're waiting on that first scholarship. Uh, Morgan State's been really looking hard at him. But you know, beside that, he is just—he goes out there, and he's the ultra competitor. He doesn't like being on the sideline, whether it's in practice or on uh, during a game. So in a game, he's going to—we're looking at him really carrying the load this year, and really being the running back that he can be. And talk about a newcomer that you're expecting, that you're really expecting to uh, put some things on tape and really have a good uh, time for you this year. Uh, I, I would say the, the newcomer that I'm looking forward to the most is Raekwon McCarter. He's just at every single thing that we could offer. He, he goes to the off-season training, the weight room, the beach. Wherever we are doing training, he is there. I got a new guy uh, here at corner. Keandre Costin, who uh, when we saw him at the Ben Tate camp, uh, honestly, in my eyes, he was the best corner there. Talk about him and what, what this young defense will bring to the table. Yeah, our, our D-backs this year are, are pretty much all new. Like you said, Keandre is one of those guys who's going to try to shut you down a line of scrimmage. He's very strong. He's little, but he's very strong and he's very fast. And, you know, we're really excited about all of them. Well, Saturday, Wahai made the trip to Wildcat Country to take on six-time state champion Delmar in a little preseason football action. 
There's that man, Nelson Brown. He was out to, uh, on Saturday with a shoulder bruise. Just precautionary, he told me. He expects to practice on Monday. There's another star, Shane Leatherberry, and he is a veteran and natural-born leader of the Wildcats. I expect those young guys there to look up for him. We know he's going to lead them on O, but check out what he does on defense. Gets the pick right there. He's out on the island by himself, and this guy will be a natural-born leader. One thing I really liked about Wahai was their defensive line. That right there is Therese Savage breaking through and dropping Leatherberry for the sack. I'm telling you, him and Mel Morris are two studs on the defensive line. This play right here by this young man, Raquan McCarter, is just a fabulous play. Look at him. Take it down through the middle and get those defenders out of his way. That's just a filthy move. Excuse me. Thank you for a touchdown. This kid's going to be a stud. Not to be outdone, Delmar Jr., Dejour Brown, takes the handoff straight up the middle. 60 yards out, and he didn't even get touched, folks. He's got some burners. He had a great scrimmage as well. And for Delmar, Coach Dave Hearn, he knows that the preseason is all about figuring his team out. The, the first week, you're hoping just to keep everybody healthy and that first scrimmage, and that's what we did today, and to make sure that, that we've learned something. But if, if, and then if you haven't got players that are uh, what you thought, especially the new guys, the ones you're talking about, then you may have to make adjustments, or you, then you can figure out what do they need. And uh, so then we, we'll make adjustments ourselves because we're not just going to plug along. If we're struggling in a particular area, we'll try to make some, uh, make some modifications. Well, if you know anything about Delmar football, you know Coach Hearn will have that team ready, whether he has all freshmen or all seniors. There is one, there's a reason why he's a four-time state champion there. Still to come, the Raiders of Woodbridge on the field for some field hockey. We'll tell you what they're doing to improve upon that 9-6 record from just a year ago. Don't go anywhere. My name is David Wells, inside linebacker for James and Bennett, and you're watching Delmar Sports Insider. Welcome back. Well, the uh, fall sports season, it is officially underway, and that means just one thing, Giselle. It is time yeah. for some field hockey. I mean, Woodbridge, they got their first taste of the preseason action on Wednesday when they hosted a five-team scrimmage. Head coach Wheatley's team will be trying to make it to the state tournament after coming up with just one game short a year ago, finishing with a 9-6 and six record. That right there was Sarah Davis putting on the moves from way outside and scoring it. Just a beautiful goal. And then just a few minutes later, the Raiders, they were right back at it. They found the net one more time. This one was from Brady Keeler with the honors with a beautiful slap shot. Our goal is to get into the tournament and get really far into the tournament. And I don't know, we've been talking about it for a few years. So I'm just really excited and it's really important to me. It's always great to set those expectations. Yeah, definitely when you uh, raise it up there. And the fact is, I looked at this team and I, we went in. I was talking with Coach Wheelie afterwards. They had, they knew they were going to be able to score the ball. They knew, they knew they had a good opportunity of being a very high scoring team, but they didn't realize how good they were going to be defensively. And they definitely showed that in the scrimmage. I feel like they're going to be a quality program, but what scares me is the fact they only have three seniors and they're going to be relying on a lot of unproven teams. That doesn't mean that they can't do it, but the fact is those guys haven't had the minutes yet. They haven't proven they can play at this level. So there's still some question marks moving forward. I mean, you're right. Having only three seniors is a little worrisome, but sometimes you have to look past that number and see the group as a whole. And, you know, growing pains are actually normal in high school, and this team looks ready to step it up to the next level. And like the coach said, it's about avoiding mistakes and learning from each game, which is key in any sport. Yeah, absolutely. And by the way, congratulations to Coach, or coach Wheatley. She actually just got married a couple weeks ago, so oh, a big shout out to her. <laughs> And the volleyball season, well, that's here as well. Several teams were taking part in their first scrimmages of the year. On Thursday, Snow Hill welcomed North Dorchester to town. The Snow Hill Eagles will have some high expectations coming in this year. And as for Dorchester, well, it's a success even having a team on the court. I mean, the Eagles, this is the first time they've had a program reopening up this year. Now, overall, though, both teams were pretty pleased with what they saw from their team. Really, we're trying to work on the fundamentals, the basics again, trying to improve some serving, some net play and really trying to put together an offense that's going to be a little bit more aggressive than we were last year. We've got 15 girls out here. We kind of tried to go with our most athletic girls and just kind of work with it from there. But they're very excited. Um, Coach Jackson and I are very excited. So it's always cool to have a new program, give the kids some more experiences. She so is true. absolutely right about that. And I was thinking about that. What a great experience for these guys. I mean, they're going into the season. They're not going to have too much pressure. I mean, no one's really expecting them to make a run as far as wins, but just the fact to be a part of a brand new program, to get out there on the court and to have a great time with your friends and to learn a new sport and be competitive with it. I mean, this is something they'll be able to say for the rest of their lives, that they were part of the very first team there 
And I really, I mean, I can't imagine what that feeling must be like. But you should. That sounds like us. It's like the beginning. We started from the beginning. I remember when I was a part of a water polo team at my high school that was only in its second year. It's all about patience when you're in a startup program, and the Eagles will learn so much of that this season. And Spencer, one of the things that they have to also see is being able to build that roster and see who's actually going to be able to perform well on the court. Yeah, absolutely. Moving forward, that'll be a great test of just what this team is going to have. All right, and so many games on the Eastern Shore. Tell us which ones we should go to. Like our Facebook page, 47ABC Sports. And after you do that, go follow us on our Twitter account, at 47ABC Sports. And even if it's a selfie or of you at a sporting event, send us those two. You might see them in our next show. Yeah, absolutely. And we're going to go ahead and take another quick commercial break. But don't go anywhere. We're going to talk a little fantasy football after the break. What players can make or break this year's team? We'll discuss. This is Monica Wheatley for the Woodbridge Field Hockey Team, and you are watching the Delmarva Sports Insider. Welcome back. Well, we're going to talk a little fantasy football now, guys, and there's always that one guy that's flying under the radar that oh, yeah. can totally change your team. Giselle, who you got this year? My sleeper pick is actually someone I went to high school with, T.Y. Hilton from the Colts, a wide receiver. And he was as impressive with Andrew Luck. He was impressive as Andrew Luck's number one option last season after the injury to Procaine Reggie Wayne. I mean, just look at those stats from last season. Hilton had 1,083 yards and five touchdowns. He's speedy and sure. Yep. Wayne is coming back this season, but I think Hilton will put up big numbers this season and give me some major points that I need. Yeah, well, my sleeper I did not go to high school with, but <laughs> I'm going with EJ Manuel. Manuel missed six games last season with a hyperextended knee, but he's got some serious weapons now. CJ Spiller, Fred Jack Jackson, uh, they traded for up in the draft for Sammy Watkins. He's a monster. They add Robert Woods and speedster Marquise Goodwin, and they brought, got Mike Williams on. And uh, I mean, there's a lot of weapons there, a lot of young weapons, but they're very talented. He's undrafted in most leagues, you know. So uh, I think you'll, you can make a case to be a good sleeper pick. I definitely do. You can definitely get him late in the draft. I think there's a, like a big threat. reason why he is undrafted in most <laughs> leagues. I'm sleeping on Manuel moving forward. But the guy I'm going with, I mean, tight ends are always hard to find. I think Ladarius Green is going to have a big year for the Chargers in this year. I mean, he didn't exactly have amazing numbers last year. I get it, just 13 catches and three TDs. But he's starting to take more and more reps with the ones. Philip Rivers loves his tight ends, and I think he's going to get a lot of balls thrown his way this year. Oh, you think so? I, I think so. I definitely I think know. so as well. Well, have you ever had someone let you down <laughs> just when you needed them? Let's talk about the bus. The worst fantasy football thing that could ever happen is a bus. Who are you guys going with today? Drum roll. I got Gronk. I know. Someone out there also has Rob Gronkowski as their bus. I know. Oh, this guy's wow. coming off an ACL injury, <laughs> and he's no Adrian Preetson. Yeah. Let's be real. The unlucky number here is 14, and no, that's not the number of touchdowns he scored. That's how many weeks of football he's missed due to injury. I understand that he's one of the top tight ends in the league when he was extremely healthy. Remember, extremely healthy. Scoring 42 touchdowns in 50 career regular season games. He's also had eight career surgeries. I just don't see the spark in Gronkowski. How much can he really physically overcome this season? The game is just getting even harder. I don't know. Anytime you got Brady, I feel like you're going to be all right. But well, as long as he's on yeah, the field, you're right about Brady. that. All right, sorry, not sorry, Eagles fans, but I'm going with Nick Foles. Y'all know what you're saying. Shocker. Nick Foles had amazing <laughs> numbers last season, which is exactly why I'm staying away from him. Teams now have film on him, and they're prepared for Chip Kelly's offense. Plus, he lost to Sean Jackson. He looked lost when I was up there at Eagles camp, guys, but so did all the other Eagles quarterbacks. But I'm not saying don't draft the Eagles, especially Sean McCoy, but I don't think McCoy, uh, Foles is going to put up half the numbers he put up last year. So You I just mean, made a lot of people angry here on I mean, I think he's on to something there. I mean, he's not going to have those type of numbers. The guy that I definitely am going to stay away from, though, is Eric Decker. I mean, this guy is definitely going to cost some people <laughs> from winning their leagues because they're going to dread on. I get it. I mean, he had some good numbers in Denver, but the fact is that offense is ridiculous there. And a number that you need to know is that guy dropped 30% of his catchable balls. I mean, he has not got good hands. He doesn't have good breakaway speed. And I just don't feel like anyone should go near him at all. I mean, he's also on the Jets. That's true. <laughs> Be sure to tune in next week when we bring in Chris Russell from ESPN 980 in D.C. Let's talk about the Redskins. And coming up after the break, one of our favorite segments, crazy catches, dives, and stops. Our plays of the week coming up. You won't want to miss it. My name is Tristan Harris, quarterback at Dover High, and you're watching Del Marva Sports Insider.
Welcome back. Well, it's now time for uh, my personal favorite oh, segment. Yeah. I can't wait for Lays it. Of Lays week. of the week. The <laughs> top ones we got. Take a look. We got some great ones here for you. Let's start off with a little Woodbridge football. Oh my goodness, Ooh, that goodness. was one of the most nastiest in out jukes. One more Ooh. look at this guy. Slow it down and look at this DB. That is just his knee, his hey, ankle, his leg, everything is just moves. broken right there. That, that just looks gotta horribly painful. Give the quarterback painful. some props for that. That quarterback's one. got some moves. Yeah, he's going to be all right this year. Definitely going to watch out for him. Yeah, we take it over to some Clippers and Colonel action. It's only a scrimmage, but why does it look like midseason form? Senior quarterback Jacob Larmore under pressure, still able to find that receiver. Steven Sone, I mean, with a defender on him, makes the incredible catch. He was in the air. That was yeah, definitely that was a great catch. And my play of the day will come from the scrimmage I was at. Why high sophomore running back Raquan McCarter gets a sweep off the right side. Watch these moves, guys. One. Two and oh, uh, look at this. oh my goodness, that's, <laughs> the, that's the B button on the Xbox right there. That's a spin move. What a play for this young stick. guy! I can't wait to see what he has up next for this uh, this upcoming season. And so many plays. And don't forget to look for us out on the field this week on Wednesday. We will be at Indian River for their football scrimmage against Hodgson, and then on Thursday we'll be at Parkside's volleyball match against Colonel Richardson. And then next Saturday we'll be also be checking out the Delmar football for their scrimmage. And that's all the time we got for this week. We'll make sure to check in next week, same time, same place, right back here at 11.30 a.m. In the meantime, make sure you follow us all week for your scores, highlights, and updates at 47ABC Sports on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Have a good day.